G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, doing YouTube is quite rewarding, and one of the big uh, pluses with it are the comments that people send in. It's always good to read comments, and every uh, YouTube creator that I've ever communicated with has always felt the same way. The, uh, the comments make uh, YouTube really interesting. Now, I've never actually responded to comments on camera before. Well, if I have, it's a long time ago. But I got one the other day that uh, it hit a nerve. It touched a nerve that it was something that I'd thought about for a long time and something that I always considered whenever I look at new, new lathes or any lathe, it's, it's always in the back of, back of my mind, you know. It's, it's something that's going on that with small lathes, we're talking sort of, 10 inch swing and below. And it's something that's going on with those hobby lays that I think is really not a good idea. And I'll read the, uh, the comment I got, and uh, bear with me, I'll put my specs on, the old eyesight's so not what it used to be. And the comment's from Joe CNC, and it's in regard to a video I put up called I Get Fired Up Over My Sherline Metal Lathe. This is when I got the little Sherline. And his comment is, love the T-slot cross slide that you have on that Aussie version. The US version has two long slots. I wish they had better and bigger anti-backlash nuts on this one. But it's really about the T-slots. And I reply back, hi Joe, I agree. Many new lathes, not just Sherline, have longitudinal T-slots. And I think it's a bad move. It must weaken the cross slide dovetails and that is where all the compound leverage is focused. The British way of doing it crossways is much better in my honest opinion. Now when I say British, I should say European, I suppose, because it's uh, a, a common practice on a lot of European type lathes to have the T-slots the going across the lathe, um, cross slide, rather than full length. This seems to be a, an oriental approach. This is something that's on a lot of new lays you buy now, and every time I look at it, I think that is really a totally useless, or pretty much useless, and b that must weaken the hell out of the cross slide. Joe CNC got back to me a bit later and said, "Agree completely, Rob. Big thumbs up for the video. Thanks, for, thanks, Joe. That's nice of you to say that. But this is really, yeah, the point I'm making is that if we look at all the lathes that are being sold now, the new lathes, which are invariably Asian, Chinese, the T-slots they're putting in the cross slide, I think, are a big, big negative. And I'll show you what I mean. Let's start off by looking at the little shear line that uh, we were talking about. You can see here that the cross slide is slotted crossways. Now the dovetails have got all their meat, all their thickness from the dovetail up to the top of the cross slide everywhere along here except in three places. Now if they were to slot the cross slide lengthwise, which is what they are now doing on shear lines, and my big gripe with a lot of small Chinese lathes, the effect is going to be quite dramatic as far as the rigidity of the dovetails on both sides. You are going to reduce the, the cross section from the, the top of the dovetail to the top of the cross slide enormously. This is what they're doing now. Next time you go to the shop, just look at the cross slides on any 10 inch swing and below lathe. And in most cases, they will have T-slotted the cross slide. It seems to be the flavor of the month. Okay, now we'll look at my old Chinese lathe. It's uh, quite a few years old. And when I bought it, the cross slide was one of the major considerations I had when I was looking for a lathe. So here's the cross slide and you can see it is totally solid 
from here to here. You check out the later Asian lathes and you'll find that they have T-slotted down through the section here on both sides. What it means is that as your compound is applying leverage back down through the tool post to the cross slide, ultimately the highest leverage point is going to be at the pivot point, which is basically here and here. So that if you've got any metal reduction through this section here, these uh, dovetailed sections are going to flex out, they're going to try and spring out from the centre section, and that's exactly what does happen. And that's why you're never ever going to have the same sort of rigidity by doing it long ways as you're going to have by doing it crossways. The joke of it is that in a lot of cases the T-slots are not even used to attach the compound. The non by 20s use it and I mean they've got a known weakness in the way the compound mounts but I mean it's not helping by using T-slots when they could have drilled and tapped straight into solid cross slide the same as they've done here. The other point is too that apart from possibly parting off on the on the other end of the cross slide there's really not a lot of use for full length T-slots. Most people will use the the compound and the tool post in the further furthest back rearward position to get the maximum allowable travel, possible travel to and from the work. So, you know, the chance of moving the two, the, the, uh, the compound in are <laughs> pretty unlikely. Anyway, that's what they've done. Okay, let's have a look at the old Shorblin. And on these, of course, the cross slide is solid. Uh, that's how they, they did it. The top slide is T-slotted, and, and that's just an alternative way of mounting the tool post. But even so, there's enough meat in this top slide to do the job. It, it's, it's more than adequate. Once you start milling away out of the cross slide, to mount your top slide, it's a, it's a downward spiral as far as strength is concerned. Now getting back to the, the 10 inch swing Chinese lathe I've got here, as you can see it's got a totally solid, well near as damn it solid cross slide. It's built for heavy work. It's also got a number three Morse taper tail stock. How many 10 inch swing lathes have a number three Morse tail stock from China? Not too many, they're nearly all Morse 2. So this is a heavy little unit for its size, one inch spindle bore and that's why when they took this unit off the market I think it was a, a serious <laughs> retrograde step because the replacement machines they've got out are nowhere near as heavy in my opinion but that's what you get. Now OK, if we consider that 10 inch swing and down currently pretty much are the culprits for this T-slotting of the cross slides longitudinally, let's look at the bigger lathes, let's look at the 12 inch and the 14 inch swing lathes with the fancy geared heads and all the bells and whistles that the, that the uh, backyarders uh, who want the ultimate big machine will run out and buy. And if you look at the look at the, the cross slide on those lathes and bear in mind they've got a lot more meat in the cross slide than this will ever have. Go and have a look and tell me how many are T-slotted in any direction, crossways or longitudinally. The ones I've looked at, the answer is a big fat zero, none. They don't do it. So why the hell do they do it on the small lathes? I think it's just a fashion statement. They stick them on, it looks good, but people don't pay attention to the fact that you're reducing your metal thickness down to bugger all between the bottom of the T-slot the and the top of the dovetail. 
Okay, that's it from me. It sounds like a bit of a rant, and it is a bit of a rant because it's something that I think is pretty poor. But that's what you get these days. You don't get it on every lathe, but you get it on a lot of lathes, a lot of small lathes. So when you're shopping for a lathe, have a look at that aspect and consider it carefully because there's no way I would ever buy a lathe with that sort of an arrangement if I've got an alternative. Okay, that's it from me. And uh, once again, yeah, that comment inspired me to do this video because this is something that's been bugging me for a hell of a long time. Okay, that's it from me. Have a good one. Cheers.